The federal government has restated its commitment to meet the demands of the oil producing areas in Nigeria. The Minister of State for Petroleum, Ibe Kachiku, gave the assurance during a town hall meeting with community representatives in Benin City, the Edo State Capital. The state governor, Godwin Obaseki, was also in attendance, and he blames the Niger Delta Development Commission for contributing to the underdevelopment of the oil producing region. Leading players in the oil sector assemble for this town hall meeting in Benin City, the Edo State Capital. The Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources has put together this interactive session to proffer solutions to the development-related issues in the oil-producing communities. The representative of host communities in Edo State are the first to take the floor. They underline the enormity of the problems they've been subjected to in the area. Our inaccessibility of our communities which share border with Delta State. As a result of that, a lot of our oil wells are being ceded to Delta State. In fact, it has seemed that, that part, those part of our state or our local government are not us. Minister of the Niger Delta, Usani Usani, says engagements of this kind will put a stop to crisis in the Niger Delta region. It suffices to say, this time around, there has been no insensitivity in respect to what the people are demanding, what they are yearning for, and what the government is willing to do. Instead, it has been the fact that we are moving surely on every aspect that has been placed before us. Those who are not captured, something will happen about such. On his part, the Minister of State for Petroleum, Ibe Kachiku, restates the federal government's plans to improve the economy of the oil-rich region. What we came for is an implementation meeting. There are specific things being done, and I can tell you specifically where these are located and what is going on, and we've gone quite far. We're setting up a committee of six of about eight people, one from the government of Edo State, one, uh, three from the oil communities, one from Ministry of Petroleum, one person from Ministry of Niger Delta, one person from the oil companies, and one person from security. We need to move back that in 10 years time we're able to see that the community has taken leadership of its own perspectives and is delivering results for the community. And so all of us collectively and individually have a responsibility to keep an eye on the business. For the adult state government, paucity of funds has never been the reason for underdevelopment in the oil producing communities. The governor of Edo State, Godno Basaki, faults the Niger Delta Development Commission and DDC for the poor state of the region's infrastructure. Institutions like NDDC must, we cannot, we can no longer accept the irresponsibility of NDDC. They admitted that in the last eight, nine years, they have awarded almost 80 billion naira worth of contracts, and not up to 8 billion has been executed. And even those the contracts executed have been done so shoddily and poorly. Because we cannot continue to complain when the federal government has provided an agency for us to take care of our needs in the region. We will not accept such irresponsibility moving forward. For many at the event, meetings and workshops are not new. What they desire now is to see the federal government not just talking the talk, but walking the talk. The Lagos State Government has inaugurated a committee that will interface between the host communities and the oil producing companies in Badagri. The State Governor, Mr. Akimumi Ambode, says the move is to forestall any future disturbances and agitations that may arise over oil explorations in the area. Governor Ambody also launched a courthouse in Badagri as well as a transport infrastructure in other parts of the state. Governor Akimumi Ambode's schedule begins with a meeting with traditional rulers and community leaders in Badagri, where he inaugurates a 45-member community relations committee. The committee will be liaison with the state government and oil producing companies in Badagri to forestall incidences of environmental degradation, communal disputes and civil disturbances often associated with oil producing areas. By this appointment, 
you have been called upon to bring to bear your wealth of knowledge and experience to ensure cooperation and collaboration between the communities and the oil companies operating in Badagri. Also in Badagri, Governor Ambode inaugurates the Ulushala Thomas Court House. The glory of God and the usage of humanity. From Badagri, attention shifts to road infrastructure in Ketu, a newly built lay-by and slip road in Agboyi, Ketu Local Council Development Area, is open for motorists. The road infrastructure is meant to relieve motorists of traffic gridlock along Ikorodu Expressway and the adjoining roads. Governor Amber, they also test run an e-ticketing system introduced for commuters using the Bus Rapid Transit's BRT. Activities for the day ends with the launch of the renovated BRT depot, as well as the Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, known as LAMATA, a place with a new office complex equipped to manage the new intelligence transport system. There are more Lagosians using buses. There are more Lagosians walking on the road than those of us that have cars. So we need to take proper care of them. And that's the step that we're taking here and the reforms we're doing in the transport sector. Ultimately, to create an integrated transport management system in the city, water, road, rail, air, and those working. Going forward, uh, we have a place where we can do great planning. We have a way where we can actually implement all our projects effectively. And of course, it commuters will be the one that will gain all of this. Governor Ambody maintains that these initiatives are critical to the actualization of its planned bus reforms initiative and that additional 800 buses will be provided in the next two months. The Bayelsa State Deputy Governor John Jonah has inaugurated the direct labor agency that will create jobs for youth in the state. A bill to establish it as an agency was signed into law by the state governor, Sirica Dixon, last month. The direct labor agency, which is targeted at assisting the youth in the state, is saddled with the responsibility of creating some construction jobs and cost cutting of execution of projects in the state. I just appended my signature, so this bill has become law. In this state now, we have the direct labor agency law. And by this law, there is thereby established a government agency responsible for carrying out the execution of small um, construction jobs, maintenance jobs, which will have a direct impact on the state's economy. We want to ensure that every person, every community feel the impact of this government. And this agency is made up of people that are actively involved in the infrastructure development of the state.